This season has been full of surprises in England's top flight, with certain coaches propelled into the spotlight. Pep Guardiola's reputation as the greatest manager in the world was cemented after Manchester City won the treble last season. Jurgen Klopp looks to have restored Liverpool's top status, Mikel Arteta's Arsenal are aiming to surpass last season, and Aston Villa have emerged as true dark horses under Uni Emery. Tottenham are also contender because Ange Postecoglou keeps playing what is maybe the most attractive brand football in Europe. <laughs> Newly promoted clubs Luton Town, Burnley and Sheffield United are finding it difficult to put together any sort of positive run, with Everton and Nottingham Forest also currently being dragged into the relegation dogfight, which could prove to be every bit as fascinating as the tussle for the title. Here are the top 10 Premier League managers in 2024. Andoni Iraola, Bournemouth. Iraola is a forward-thinking, ambitious manager who is innovative, but it has taken him some time to convince his new club of his distinctive tactical approach. The new Bournemouth manager started his tenure with seven losses out of 11 games. Speculation about Iraola's status began to surface, but he remained true to his ideals excellently, and the cherries began to rise up the rankings. The prominent performers for Bournemouth, who moved up to 14th in the rankings after their well-earned victory against Manchester United, were Ryan Christie, Marcus Tavernier, Marco Senesi, and former Liverpool striker Dominic Solanke. The appointment of Iraola is now looking like a masterstroke, as he's recorded four wins from five games on the touchline, and it will be fascinating to see how far the Cherries can go under his assured stewardship. Gary O'Neill, Wolves. O'Neill was given the chance to return to the Premier League at Wolves after Julian Lopetegui walked away from his post at Molineux three days before the start of the new season. The Spaniard was frustrated over a lack of transfer activity, with O'Neill inheriting a depleted, confidence-stricken squad. However, though a combination of high-intensity football and shrewd man management, the 40-year-old has lifted the team to ensure they remain a competitive Premier League force. Wolves pulled off the shock of the season so far by ending City's unbeaten start to the campaign. O'Neill has turned Wolves into an exciting, counter-attacking outfit, and they should have more than enough to stay clear of the relegation places. Marco Silva, Fulham. Alexander Mitrovic left Fulham in the summer, and the team was expected to fall apart quickly. As the team failed to fill the void in the final third, Silva had to demonstrate a great degree of tactical savvy to get the club through the first few months of the season. Over time, though, he has improved the cottagers even further. While players like Carlos Vinicius, Alex Iwobi, and Harry Wilson are beginning to produce consistently, summer edition Raul Jimenez has finally found his best form after fully recovering from a career-threatening brain injury. Silva places a premium on wing-based attacks and expects that his squad press swiftly and frequently, and it is paying off. The Portuguese tactician could take the club back into Europe if they continue to progress at such a rapid rate. Eddie Howe, Newcastle. Newcastle opened the new season with a thumping 5-1 win over Aston Villa that sent shockwaves through the rest of the division, but it proved to be a false dawn. Howe's side lost their next three matches against Manchester City. Liverpool and Brighton, shipping six goals along the way. Howe's transition-focused side are still devastating in full flow, and home wins over Arsenal, Chelsea and Manchester United showed they can mix it with anyone at St. James Park. Unfortunately, Newcastle's away form is letting them down, as they've managed just one win through their opening eight games on the road. Howe deserves more time to steady the ship, but his Newcastle side can't afford any more slip-ups. Roberto De Zerbi, Brighton. Brighton's sixth place finish in 2022-23 was well-earned and did not feel like an anomaly, but rather the beginning of something special. The Seagulls dominate games under De Zerbi. Moises Caicedo and Alexis McAllister were key to that system. But Brighton spent the $150 million generated from their respective sales to strengthen even further. New arrivals, Carlos Baleba, James Milner, Joao Pedro, 
and Mahmoud Dahoud have all settled in fast, while familiar names like Kauru Matoma, Pascal Gross, and Lewis Dunk have reached new heights. Brighton are back in the Premier League's top eight as a result, and De Zerbi never deviates from his basic ideals, with Brighton continuing to play one of the most appealing kinds of football in the league, even when wins aren't coming as regularly. Pep Guardiola, Manchester City. Company, Arteta and De Zerbi, are among the many managers that have attempted to adapt Guardiola's own version of total football over the years. But the City boss is still the master. No one would be surprised if City won a record-breaking fourth straight Premier League crown, mainly because Guardiola is always able to adapt under pressure, and when faced with setbacks, such as losing star playmaker Kevin De Bruyne to a long-term injury. The likes of Bernardo Silva and Julian Alvarez have stepped up in the Belgians' absence. While summer signing Jeremy Doku has already established himself as the most exciting young wenger in the Premier League. It would be foolish to write of Guardiola given his unrivaled genius, but even he has admitted his team are struggling, and there is now a real opportunity for their main rivals to take advantage. Ange Postacoglu, Tottenham. Tottenham had a difficult few year following Pochettino's departure in 2019 with Jose Mourinho, Nuno Espirito Santo, and Antonio Conte all unable to change the mentality at a club that had tolerated mediocrity for far too long. Spurs have been given a new lease of life under Postacoglu, who was brought in from Celtic to replace Conte in June 2023. The Australian was tasked with improving a side that finished ninth in the Premier League last season, a challenge made much more difficult by the inevitable sale of Harry Kane to Bayern Munich. However, the new Tottenham manager immediately began rebuilding the club, signing players such as James Madison, Mickey van de Van, and Guglielmo Vicario, and using the same offensive style of play that was so successful at Celtic. Postecoglou's Spurs rose to the top of the Premier League after 10 games breaking the record for the greatest start to a season by a new manager. Spurs are the best team to watch in Europe right now, and it's all because to post a couple, who has given fans new hope. Tottenham should at least aspire for the top four. Jurgen Klopp. Liverpool. The 2022-23 season was a disaster for Liverpool, who went from City's main challengers to also Rands almost overnight as they suffered a serious hangover from their unsuccessful quadruple chase in the previous campaign. Questions were rightly asked over Klopp's position, but he responded by making some big changes. The German overhauled his aging midfield with the signings of Alex McAllister, Dominic Soboslai, and Ryan Gravenberg, while cutting ties with long-term servants, Jordan Henderson and Fabinho. Those additions have sparked a resurgence, as Liverpool have won 11 of their opening 16 games. Klopp's side are back on top of the Premier League. The German coach is getting the best out of his players again, and they are battling until the very last second of matches. Klopp is showing that he remains one of the best managers in the game, and supporters will have every reason to start dreaming of more silverware if Liverpool continue to show the aggression and heart that has underpinned their success over the past six years. Mikel Arteta, Arsenal. Without a doubt, Arteta has elevated Arsenal back to the level of a top football team, but it remains to be seen if he can take that critical next step, having witnessed his squad stumble down the line in last season's title race. The Gunners have no excuses if they fail again, having spent over 200 million pounds on Declan Rice, Kai Havertz, and Jurian Timber this summer. Arteta's ruthless decision to replace number one goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale with Brentford Loney David Raya has also struck. The Gunners have developed the useful habit of grinding out wins when below their best and never let their heads drop, which is testament to the belief Arteta has instilled in the group, and he determined to bring the club's 20-year wait for Premier League glory to an end. Unai Emery Aston Villa 
Emery is doing an excellent job at Villa Park. The West Midlands club surged to their 15th successive home win, defeating Arsenal only three days after another 1-0 triumph over champions Manchester City, and they are now regarded serious title contenders. Emery's side produced the performance of the season so far to beat City, who were dominated from start to finish. A rare occurrence indeed for a Guardiola side, and every player is busting a gut for the collective cause. Oli Watkins is excelling high, and Moussa Diaby, the club record signing, is already seeming like an excellent deal at £52 million. The manager has also brought out the best in John McGinn, Ezri Kansa, Douglas Luiz, and Leon Bailey. So while Emery was wrongly mocked at the end of his stint at Arsenal, he is proving to be one of the greatest in the game again at Villa. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bells for more video on your favorite sport. Until the next one, please stay tuned.